All right, guys, welcome to the Quarantine Art Studio. We're doing this fun little cactus in a cup in gouache. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to welcome you to my art studio, a safe place where we can draw and color and paint. And today we're going to be painting this fun little cactus in a cup. I really liked the, just the whole overall shape and the simplicity of it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be using regular gouache. This is the Arteza gouache because that's the gouache that I've got. Coming up soon in April, I am going to be using the uh, Turner Acryl gouache because I'm participating in the Acrylic April Challenge that's being run by the Art Sherpa. And that is going to be a blast. I plan on posting a video Monday through Friday for the Acrylic April and I will be following the prompt list, not her tutorials. So I'll be doing my own tutorials and I will be posting these in the Acrylic April group on Facebook and here on YouTube and on my Facebook group and Facebook page. So I think we'll be able to get the word out that you don't have to uh, be really strict about you know straight acrylic paint, acrylic gouache works, acrylic inks, any of that stuff, acrylic paint. So let's see. Hello, hello. Hey there. We've got Nelson and Kristen and Mary and Shauna and oh, a whole bunch of people I haven't seen yet, but thank you so much for being here. I am really excited. So I have already drawn this using my handy dandy coloring sheet slash printable, a traceable page that you can print off from my website. The link is down below in the more information box. If you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the notification bell. Turn on all notifications so that you'll be notified when new videos go up. I, like I said, I'm trying to post Monday through Friday, either a premiere or a live video. So we have a chat. We have a chance to make connections and spend a little bit of time together. If you like this, please share it with your friends, share my channel and my videos. All right. We are going to be jumping right into this. I have a kneaded eraser. Hello, Sweet Tea and Kathy. Nice to see you guys. I'm so excited. You know, sometimes we have these ideas for things and they work out really well. And this one, after I got it all drawn on here, I had actually drawn it with the cup only coming down to here, but then that left a whole big, huge section of paper. So all I did was increase the size of my cup, the depth of it, so that it is a little bit deeper. I put it too high up on the page it's just the way it is. I'll probably be working that out a little bit, making these flowers maybe move down to the side for this one, over to the side a little bit. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. But to start off with, we need to get a background on. And I'm going to go ahead and give you the little, re the little reference picture up there in the corner. I have out on a just a plastic lid for my palette this time, the lime green, sap green, Prussian blue, burnt umber, uh, crimson red, and lemon yellow and white. I don't have any actual black on here. All right, so now I need to just get myself in a better spot for you. <laughs> hey, look at that. I do have a big jar of water and a smaller jar of water for washing the brushes in the big jar. And when I just need a little touch of water, I'm just grabbing it from the small clean water jar. I do have a big brush for putting in the background. And this is a Simply Simmons one inch flat wash. 
I have a number 12 round mimic by Creative Mark. This is a mimic squirrel and it is really, really pointy. You see that super fine point? We can get lots of details with that if we want to go to super detailed. And I'll get those things pushed out of the way, but still within reach. Here we go. And let me know if you guys want that music on in the background. I did have someone who came back and said, love the video. I love piano music, but the music was a little too loud or a little too distracting from the me chattering, I guess. And I think I have my microphone figured out. Oh, that's right. I was going to move that. You guys get to see me draw in the flower. I'm going to move that flower. It's just too close to the top. So I'm going to bring it down on the side here a little bit. See how easy that is? Just little indications. Now it looks like um, a famous mouse <laughs> or a princess from uh, long ago and far away. <laughs> so we're going to get that background damp and I'm going to make kind of a gray wash, a little bit gray blue, I think. What do you think? Gray blue wash? Oh, if anybody's interested, the t-shirt is my design and it's available on Teespring. Let's see, do I even have a Teespring link on here? Oh, I do. My Teespring link is pinned at the top of the chat. So if you're interested. So I'm just going to get this paper wet. We're going to do kind of a gray blue background. This is 140 pound watercolor paper by Arteza. And the, I'm gonna go right over the handle. And the gouache is by Arteza also. They are not sponsoring this video. I just happen to have those materials. So that's what I'm using. You know, in this time where budgets are tight, if you have acrylic paint, you can do this same painting with acrylic paint. You could actually do this design with watercolor. It's just a little bit different in the way you lay your paints down because with gouache, it is opaque and you can layer. So we'll be able to bring some shape and highlight to our cactus and to the flowers and the cup. Now we're going to mix up Hello, Madonna. Nice to see you. I have some Prussian blue and take a little bit of that umber. I just want to get a kind of gray tone going, sort of a dark, and then I'm going to take it over to my white to really lighten it down. I have two plops of white here so I can work my way around. Once I get to the smaller brush, it'll be a lot easier. The big brush on the small palette is a little bit tricky. Just getting it wet. If I end up picking up some of that green, that's okay. There we go. So now we're going to just start putting that color in. If I go into the cup, that's okay also, because what that does is it makes the cup end up being in front of the background when we paint it in. Since we are layering, this is blocking in. And right now, this is very much, I'll just go over the handle. Right now, this is very much like watercolor, just putting in a wash. Get it right up against the edge of that, those flowers and the cactus. Now for the bottom here, I think I want to maybe 
darken it just a little bit back here. And then I'll work that up just a bit. Just giving it a little indication. This one doesn't really show you. I think that they did this on a flat white piece of paper that was just whoosh rolled up behind the cup of cactus. But there we go. But that's all it takes to get in a lovely little easy background. There we go. Whoa, that really blew out. Sorry about that. I had to do some resetting of my computer. It required the full update of the operating system this time, which is really a bummer because it took about three hours for it to do the update. But there we go. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I generally try to talk to adults in all uh, complete sentences, but I do like the music when I'm watching videos. So, you know, sometimes different people have different um, comfort levels and I'm trying to be trying to do this in a comfortable way. Whoops. I have to lay that down, drop that to the floor. Come on. Come on. Release. There we go. All right. Something was hung up on my cord. So now I'm going to go ahead and dry this really quick so we can go in and start working on the cactus. The cup will actually be our last part because it is mostly in the front. So I am going to put the cactus and the flowers and then the stones and then the cup. So if you guys have any questions on what I'm doing or how I'm doing it, please ask. If you are watching after the video is uh, completed, please leave your questions in the comment section so that I can see your question and get it answered. Got to stick my tape back down. The tape releases from this background when I am... Um, heating it. But that's also a good trick on how to get the tape off your paper is to heat it. There we go. Thank you, Mark, for being here as my moderator. Mark is my husband. He's in another room doing this for me. I'm going to take my uh, number 12 round brush Hey, Mary. <laughs> yeah. All right. So looking at this, the flowers are actually behind the cactus. So I'm going to go in and start working on those flowers first, I think. And I have a little spray bottle. This is a light mist. I just want to give it a light mist. This was actually from my eye doctor for uh, lens cleaner. Hey, Sandy, nice to see you. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a touch of the crimson here with a bit of that Prussian blue and get kind of a really pretty red violet color. What is my art background? Ooh, that's a good question. My art background is I grew up with a family that really appreciated art, really appreciated it and promoted it with us kids. If we had an idea of something we wanted to do, we could just do it. Um, generally, we had to figure out the least expensive way <laughs> To get it done, we did a lot of reuse 
reuse type projects before it was even really popular. Now what I did is I just went in and put that light or that dark color of this red violet in. Look at that. You're going to paint. You're going to paint it while I'm live. Woohoo! That's excellent. So just for the people who have come in late, I have lime green, Prussian blue, burnt umber, sap green, lemon yellow, crimson red, and titanium white. There's no black. And next layer up, I'm going to get a lighter tone of that same kind of purpley color. These paints were put out about an hour ago, so they are fresh-ish. They're starting to skin a little bit, which is no big deal because regular gouache re-wets. If it was acrylic gouache, once it's dry, it's dry, it's waterproof, it's acrylic. But while it's wet, you can do your blending and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and start putting some of this lighter tone in, and then we'll put another bit of color over the top of that. So that was white into that violet. I like these sort of loose, almost um, clover-like flowers. If you like uh, little flowers, little clover-like things, this was yesterday's live show. This cute kitty cat. He did take me a couple hours to do, but you can always put it on a, you know, two times speed to get it to move a little bit more quickly if you catch the drift of it in a faster way. Now I'm just working some more of that crimson right in to that premixed color. This is more the actual color of those flowers. But see how we're getting these lovely little layers in? And there will be one more layer of the light. Can you use additives to keep it moist? Um, water uh, for the regular and for as soon as you start adding other things to the acrylic, you start taking away the matte type of finish to it. Unless you have a matte medium that you can add. Oh, look at those. Oh, that's looking really pretty. Grab just a little bit of the light color now. I'm still working on this all wet, which lets the colors sort of bleed into each other. But they are layering still. Look at how I was able to get that light color right on top. And then I want a touch of that darker color down here at the bottom of this. We are rocking this one. A little bit of that darker color down at the bottom. I have a little bit of the lighter color out here on the tip. And maybe even a touch of white. See how this blends with the colors that are already there. I like that. This is regular gouache, not the acrylic. This is the Arteza regular gouache. When I am doing the acrylic April, I will be using the Turner Acryl gouache. And I have, I've only done one painting with the Turner Acryl gouache. And that will be Monday's premiere video. And that's this one, Little Hummingbird Moth. That will be going up on Monday as a premiere with a live chat at 9.45 a.m. Pacific time, Monday. So now what I wanna do is start laying in that sort of dark turquoisey green in the background for the cactus. The cactus flowers can be preserved. Wonderful. Do they dry kind of papery like the um, status or uh, you know, how you can dry hydrangeas, those types of flowers. So I'm taking the Prussian blue 
and a bit of the sap green. Let's get that sap green going. There we go. Prussian blue and sap green makes this sort of deep turquoise, kind of like a phthalo, but not, not exactly. The Prussian blue in Arteza is almost a phthalo green. Where do where did I find the art challenges? Oh, if you don't have the uh, list of um, prompts for the Acrylic April, you can go to the artsherpa.com and click on the Acrylic April tab and it will give you all of the prompts and all of the colors she's using. And if you are um, interested in what I'm going to be doing and I'm, I will be doing a full blog post on my website at delip deliberately hyphen creative.com and I will have a kind of like a little grid with all of the pictures and the days that I'm going to be doing them based on the prompts that are the Art Sherpa acrylic April, April prompts. Oh boy, I'm just really getting all those words out today, aren't I? All right, so now I have that turquoisey color that is sap green and Prussian blue, and look at that beautiful sort of emeraldy green. This is my deep color. This is the color on the far side here. Get a little bit of water. It will be the shadowy tone deep inside this cactus. And it even works its way almost all the way across it gets a little bit of a highlight more in this area. So I will just work up to that area so I can just blend my highlight. And if you notice here, I am working top to bottom. I'm letting my strokes overlap and that's giving us automatically those ribs without having to fuss. Look at that. don't have to fuss about it. You don't have to, oh my gosh, this edge here is deep. This edge here is high. This edge gives you a dark shadow. This edge, you don't, you don't have to worry about that. So look at that. Wow. So the colors in this one was the, for this in the Arteza paints, the Arteza gouache paints, this is Prussian blue and sap green to make that beautiful deep emeraldy type color. Now if I wanted to lift out the color because I wanted it to be a little bit lighter, I can go and just take my brush right in and lift out in a couple spots. Just work the paint down. Just keep working it around in the way that the cactus grows. So see how we've got that beautiful shape already. Wow. Okay. I'm going to just water that down just a little bit. Maybe pick up a little bit of lime, lime green and just get a bit of lighter color here so I can work that dark color down into it. This is really like, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, I get pleased. I, I enjoy, I enjoy, um, making myself happy, I guess. And right now that's a really good thing. Figure out ways to make your heart happy. Because boy, oh boy, we need to be making our hearts happy. And look at that. Now, I want to go ahead and dry this. See, we haven't, haven't been doing hard, you know, anything hard here. Need to just lay that down. Looks like a fun little hairstyle going on here. 
go ahead and dry that. So thank you guys so much for being here. If you're looking for ways to support my channel, really and truly the best thing right now is to share my videos out with all of your friends. And if you're new, go ahead and subscribe. Like the videos. When you're watching the videos, click the like button on any creator. Click the like button if you like what they're doing because that's how YouTube figures out that uh, somebody likes that video and they will share it. Because right now, YouTube is not sharing my videos out with the public very much. Very few people are actually getting the chance to see my videos. And personally, I think they're pretty good. What do you guys think so far? I'm looking at this going, you know, I want to go ahead and get the back of the cup in coming around. So it's that inside shadowy bit and get the rocks on and then put the little prickles. I think that's our best way to go at this now. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, you very little hard, you know, there no hard work really. It was just laying it on and letting it overlap. Then I went back in and just lifted out a little bit of that color by just moving it with a wet brush. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and let's see the inside of that cup touch of the burnt umber into maybe that blue that we mixed for the background and get that put in back here. Remember, we can bring our lighter colors over so we can go ahead and just pretty much paint in this area. And that way we will have the shadows down low under the rocks too. And we won't have to go in and try and paint little shadows around the rocks. Let's just get that, that shadowy bit down inside. When we put the rocks on, they are going to be lighter. They are going to be brighter. There we go. And see, even though I'm working on an angle, I'm not, the paint isn't running down. Well, thank you so much, Smurf. I appreciate that. And Cat. Grab a little bit of that lighter blue. And just drop a couple spots in. Just to give me some ideas where things are going to go. You know, not not hard guys not hard there's a little and the reason I'm doing that is because there's a little bit of a lighter edge at the top of that uh, shadow inside the cup let's see uh, oh other places where that shadow is inside the handle so in the handle here there's a bit of that shadow and at the top, and you're not seeing it too much. There'll be highlights. Remember with gouache that light colors dry darker and dark colors dry lighter. So there's a interplay of the colors that you're not always sure about, but it's a surprise. Now, I am looking here and going, all right, so maybe start working some of that blue that we worked in that came over the cup, work a bit of that up with some gray. This is, even though it's a darker value or a, a darker tone, the value is actually still quite light. All right. And this has, basically it has a color to it, even though it's mostly just gray in shadow, by putting this color on, we'll be able to put those highlights on 
and have them stand out. And because we're using gouache, we'll be able to put those highlights on with the white and have it really quite pretty quite quickly. So we're just getting that kind of gray on there and looking at the looking at the table here it's darker blue gray underneath this edge right there just a little bit and there's a little bit of a shadow back here behind there Ah, the painting is taped to a piece of um, plastic signboard. You can get this. It's corrugated, just like cardboard, but it's um, po like polystyrene plastic. And I got it, I believe I picked this piece up on Amazon, but you can get it in the poster board and signboard sections at uh, the craft store, like, like Michael's or any of those. Now I'm just going to soften that shadow out and I don't mind if it ends up kind of blooming around the edge of the shadow. Oh that, wow. <laughs> yeah, I surprise myself. I do, I do, I surprise myself. Right down here closer to the cactus the shadow is much deeper. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just taking straight burnt umber and making that shadow deeper right there and maybe touching it out here. The rocks are going to be going over this. So we don't have to worry. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for for liking that title. It sort of came to me as I was busy posting. So I've got a live video posted for today and tomorrow and Friday already on my channel. So tomorrow I am going to do the honey, can you bring me the Bob Ross? It's on the frame in the in the living room. Uh, I'm going to do Bob Ross live tomorrow, the mountain painting. So it's not going to end up looking exactly like the one. Thank you. I'm going to do Bob Ross with gouache. And this is standard gouache, the same gouache that I'm doing this painting with. I'm going to do Bob Ross live, hopefully in the half an hour range. This was done in half an hour. I was watching Bob do it and I did it as he was going. I did use a palette knife but the paint is not super thick, so it's not gonna flake off or cause me any grief afterwards. Oh, your acrylics for pouring? Awesome, you can do this with craft bottle acrylics. <laughs> I've actually been told by people that they like my videos because I do give kind of that Bob Ross type vibe. Okay, you're not supposed to touch your face. I know, but boy, my nose was itching. <laughs> and I will wash my hands really well before I go anywhere. Like, into the next room. <laughs> so, I'm going to go ahead and dry this. We will be putting in the rocks, putting in the highlights on the cup, and the little prickles, and we'll be done. <laughs> Woo! See, we're zooming by on this one too. So I want to dry the rocks real quick, or dry that uh, shadow real quick. Okay, that looks dry. We're going to go in with some of this white and if, it's, if it gets a bit of that blue in it, that's okay, or the gray. We're going to put our rocks in, and then we will put the bright highlight on top of them. So these rocks, 
kind of have um, dark and light spots. They're not perfect. They're rough. They're not they're not round pebbles. They they sort of stand up a bit. Just sort of dab them in. You don't have to be perfect with this. By putting that shadow in the deep part, we get the effect of the rocks. Look at that. <laughs> yep, tomorrow at the same time. So tomorrow at 1215, I will be attempting Bob Ross Live. Um, I know that I can paint it, but I'm definitely going to be depending on my husband to do a lot of the watching the chat and out answering questions because when you do a painting live like that with a certain outcome that's expected, which I usually don't try to put expectations on my outcomes. And see, these rocks look, you know, kind of rough. They are in the, in the actual... In the actual reference, they're pretty rough too. So I want to take a bit of that blue and the white, and a touch of that umber again. I want to get the top edge firmed up, have it coming across in front of the rocks. I will be putting a highlight on here. But I just want to make sure that the cup is coming up in front of those rocks. See how that goes? And then we can just blend this down in. Because there's paint there already, I can pick up the paint that's there and keep working it in. But I don't want to end up with any real sharp hard edges on my shadows. So that's why I'm working it this way. I don't think I'm going to put the pink stripe. Maybe I should. Should I put the pink stripe on the cup? I didn't paint, I didn't draw it in, but that doesn't mean we can't put it in. So there's a bright white highlight. And see how just putting that little swoop of that highlight right there along the edge of the rim just makes it feel like it's more real without having to be fussy. You know, I, I'm trying to not, I'm trying to not be too fussy, but I do need that edge to be up higher just a bit. So we've got all those shadows on the handle. Now I can go in and put the highlight and that's going to make our handle become more real. Yeah, the final layers on the cactus is just going to make the whole thing sing. So there we go. Just little touches here and there. You don't have to put a ton. Okay, so you really can't see that because it's kind of grayed out. I'm going to go over here to my fresh white and get some of these little, kind of like a little reflected highlight, even though it's in the shadow. There. Little bits, little, little bits, touches here and there. Just pop it out, make it feel more real. Let's see. I want to change this, the shape of that handle a little bit. And you can. 
with gouache, you can go in and change those shapes. Yeah. All right, so this bit right in there is actually a lot darker. So we're just gonna throw a little bit of that darker color in there and put a little bit of that darker color up here. All I'm doing is going and looking back and forth between the reference and my painting. <laughs> I am really, really enjoying this. A slave to the photos. Yeah, it, it's really hard. You can become that slave to the photo and it really, it, when you tie yourself so tightly to, tie your outcome so tightly to the photo reference, it's very difficult to ever come up to that level of the photo realism. That is a skill that I don't have. But many people, they work on that forever, but they always feel like their art isn't good enough because they haven't made it to that perfect representation of the photograph. Where what you're wanting to do is put the representation that's in your heart. Your heart doesn't need it to be perfect the way the photo was. If you want that, there's a photograph. Your heart wants it to be something that lifts you up and makes you feel happy. So this is not ever going to be perfect, but it's making me so happy to do it that I don't care. <laughs> So yes, the magic of shade, shading, the curve of that line. One thing to make note, the curve of this line matches the curve at the bottom of the cup. So if you want it to look like you're looking a bit inside, this curve has to come forward towards you. If you want it so you, you're not looking into the cup at all, but your eye line is down lower, then you would have straight lines for your cup or very shallow on the curve. So just, just little things to keep in mind. Now I am going to get back to those flowers again. I want a little bit more dark. So I'm taking that Prussian blue with a bit of the crimson, making that purple again, purple again. The Prussian blue is very strong. There we go. Now we're getting that purple. And see, I went right over the top of that red. I can get that back by just washing it off and wipe it. I just want a little bit more of a shadow in a couple spots here on the bottom side of that flower. This is on the shadowy side. And the underside of the flower here little tiny strokes. They don't have to be actually petals. They're just little strokes. See how we're getting that shape? Hey there, Debbie. Nice to see you here. Okay, guys, I've been talking a lot. I need to take a drink of my tea that's kind of gotten cold. We are so close. We are going to go ahead and get the, let's see here, have a, a printed page. You end up with sort of a halo of yellow from the little tiny flicks of the prickles. But I think I'm going to go along and put dots with the white and then put flicks of yellow on top of it. So, but I think the white is actually going to get a tiny bit of lime green in it. There, I like that. And we are just going to start putting dots where the little prickles are going to be. Let's 
And you don't have to put the prickles on if you don't want to. If you like your cactus prickleless, do that. Now, if you see how I'm doing this, I'm curving those little prickles to the side. As I'm coming towards me, they're actually curving a lot less. These little guys are fairly flat lines coming down. And now I'm working to that other side. <laughs> you love that I don't care. Excellent. Because you know what? That is sort of the way I get through my day is that only care about the things that are going to really, really matter in the long run. And me making a perfect painting is not something that is going to matter in the long run. <laughs> but look at that. Aren't those cute? You could stop at just having the little dots. You wouldn't have to do anything else. This could be finished right now. You could be done. I'm not done. <laughs> I didn't practice this. I'm doing these live for you guys the first time. The only thing I've practiced was that I drew it to make the traceable. I drew it on the paper. I took a photograph and then I drew it on uh, my iPad for a traceable. So I've done the drawing a couple times, but I've never painted this. Um, you just, with how many paintings I'm planning on doing, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm mucking about, exactly. So now I'm going to get some of that lemon yellow, nice amount of that, and, oops, and some of this white and make a nice creamy white yellow, creamy white yellow, a creamy pastel. There we go. And I do want that to be a little bit more fluid. I'm still using this ginormous brush. You don't have to. You can use a tiny detail brush. The thing about the big brush is that it holds more paint. So now I'm just going to start putting little flickety flickities. And you're really not going to see them very much until we get right over the top. But look at that. You're starting to see that little yellow halo. You just want your paint to be fluid enough so that it comes off the, the tip. And I'm not paying close attention to how many little prickles each little spot gets. I'm just sort of doing a few. And we start getting that lovely little glow right off the edge. And in some spots, yes, you will still see pencil lines on some of my paintings, especially when I do that kind of washed in background. There's still a little bit of pencil that you can see. I like that. I like seeing through the paint to the structure of a painting. So I want to thank everybody who's hanging out. And if you're sharing my videos, thank you. If you're liking my videos, thank you. If you are a new subscriber or a current subscriber, thank you. <laughs> I have so much gratitude in my heart for every single one of you being here, watching these shows, sharing them with your friends. Tiny little, just tiny little prickles. Starting from that dot that I put down and then just working out. Random angles. They don't have to all go the same way. 
You are not a copy machine, and neither is nature. If you are struggling to make super fine lines, resting your hand down on the surface or having um, something like a mall stick, which is a long stick with a pad on the end, which lifts your hand up, or, you know, finding what, what works for you, but give your hand some support and you can get those tiny little lines so much easier. And if they don't, don't end up being as tiny, it's okay. Maybe there's a whole bunch of them together. And I did not put as many ribs on this as the, as the photo reference. I'm okay with that too. It makes it easier to put these little spines on if you don't have quite so many ribs. Oh, maybe that one's just gonna get a couple. And depending on the way you're, you're holding your painting or if you're painting up on an easel, it will affect how you're holding your hand. I could turn this upside down now to get to the, these bottom ones. See, I, I gave it a lot more paint right there. No big deal. Nobody's going to look at the individual marks. What they're looking at is the overall impression. The overall impression is this is a pokey porcupine of a cactus. And that is what makes it fun. I hope everyone is staying safe enjoying these videos, finding all the people out there that are doing so many fun things, share the love. I, I know that, um, Lindsay from, Oh wait, I forgot. She's been doing some lovely Matisse, how to draw and paint videos. I've been enjoying her, her channel, which is really new and she may or may not keep doing them after the, uh, craziness of the world. She is a, in the education field as a librarian and she gets to do art in the libraries. So once, once they're back to normal again, that may be what she's doing more of. Uh, this brush is the number 12 round Mimic Squirrel. The links for all of the materials are down below in the more information box. And I do have affiliate links. So if you happen to buy this off of Amazon, I will get a small commission, but it never changes what you pay. See? And they come in sets. So sometimes Jerry's Artorama has a better price. Always go for the better price. I do not have any affiliate links with Jerry's, but you know what? I don't care. I want you to be able to get the materials and the supplies you need at the prices that you are comfortable with paying. Let's see, I want a little bit more of white and I wanna bring that white into the, kind of the centers of some of those in this brighter side. There, see? Just get a few brighter ones right here. Maybe touch a, a little bit of bright on some of those rocks. I think, maybe, maybe 
I'll get my maybe, maybe. I've been watching a lot of Bob, guys. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Kind of up here on this one because it's sort of the outside. I'm just going to give it a few little touches for some highlights. And this one's going to get a couple little touches. We just have to pull the tape off. <laughs> oh, and I need to sign it. <laughs> so let's see. Can I sign it with this one? Let's, let's see. I think it's going to be kind of a purpley color. Soft. Purple tone. Do it on this side. There we are. Ah! Get that water off before it causes me any grief. We're going to pull the tape off, so I'm going to move that out of the way. Move those back. We can turn off the reference. And pull this tape off. All right. So here we go, pulling the tape off, getting our pretty, pretty painting. Let's see, this one comes off next. Thank you guys. I really appreciate you being here. Remember that this is a short time in our lives that, that we're all being asked to be very respectful and responsible for ourselves and for each other. And truthfully, I think we should always be respectful and responsible for ourselves and others around us. <laughs> Remember to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. Ooh, I really like how this turned out. Thank you <laughs> and take care, guys.